So this is the module, um, it was purchased from eBay and it just contains a coin cell and the integrated circuit and also uh, the crystal. It's as simple as that. I've just added a few um, resistors in the cable in, 1K resistors, just in case there's a short on any of the lines to protect the uh, Raspberry Pi, which is just a standard thing I do. And then on the Raspberry Pi, because the GPO allocation has been placed in a row uh, from pin one, which is three volt three. Just paste it on, on those connectors there. So the hardware is, is one of the most basic projects I've uh, I've worked on. The main reason for the project is uh, for Python coding on the GPO pins. So we take a look at the source code for this uh, for this Python class. First of all, I'll uh, secure a shell to my Raspberry Pi. Then I'll start up a, a file manager. And the source goes on the desktop. So this is the application. I'll skip over the comments. Uh, so the first thing it does is it imports the, the class which I've written, which I'll go through in, the, in a second. I'll just go through the main application just so you get an overview of how the class works. Uh, we create an instance of the class uh, and refer to it as this RTC. And then this is the first function within the class which, which we can use. So on this instance we'll write to the RAM. So the RTC module has 31 bytes of RAM which we can write to and I've just got it so that you can pass in a string of characters and that writes that to the, the RAM. And that RAM is maintained when the battery is in the in, in the module. So uh, you can, as long as the battery is okay, you can store the this message or any message you want in there. And then the next function uh, is to write a, a system, write a date and time to the module. So the first thing is the first argument is the year, so that's 2015, they just had a two, two digit year, month is the 8th, 26th, and this is day of the week, so it's the third day, so I always refer to the day of the week, you can you can start off the day of the week at any point you want, uh, I start off as Monday being the first day of the week, Tuesday, Wednesday, so this is this Wednesday, uh, and then this is the tw uh, tw hour, which is 20, uh, which is 8 o'clock, so 8.59 and 30 seconds. And then the next function you can do is you can read, what I do is I read back the stuff that we've just written. So read the RAM and then it prints a message on the display. Uh, and then when you read the date and time, you can you create a structure, which is the all the elements of the date and time. And you pass that into the read date and time function because the, arg the argument is going to be passed back in that structure. Plus also it passes back the date and time as a string. So the first thing I do is I display the string representation of the date and time. And then for each of the values which is passed back, I display those as well. And they pass back, back numerically. So you, uh, you can do whatever you want with those values. Um, and finally, you here have to uh, close the GPI pins to let you no, no longer want to use the GPI pins. So if I run this, So there is a shell script which I've put in there. The only reason I've put a shell script in there is it redirects outputs uh, to, to nothing. So uh, because uh, the GPIO class it outputs warnings, which I don't want to see, so I've just uh, put it in the shell script to redirect those to, to nowhere. So if I run that, so this is the actual this main application running. So this is the message which I wrote to it, and it's read that back. And then this is a date in its string form, and each element of the date displayed. So that's how you can use that. Uh, so I'll go into the actual class and just go through some of the functionality of that. 
Just skip over the comments. Okay, so so we use certain Python uh, native classes. Some of the Python fr framework that you get with Python when you install it. So these are time and operator classes. And uh, and then I also use the Raspberry Pi GPI class so that we can uh, talk to the Raspberry Pi or talk, talk to the module via the Raspberry Pi GPI. Uh, first, the first thing that I do is define which pins I'm going to use on the Raspberry Pi GPI. Uh, I do that at the top here because if I ever wanted to change those pins, then we can just change the values here uh, to whatever we want them. And the reason I've used, chosen 2, 3 and 4 is because uh, from pin 1 on the GPI going down sort of the column, you have 3 volt 3 which we use to supply it, then you have the GPO2, GPO3, GPO4 and you have ground so you just put one connector on and connect the module up very easily. And then clock period, so it, the module uses a serial interface to talk to the Raspberry Pi and when you're clocking things in and out of the serial interface you need to make sure that the clock signal is high or low for a certain period of time otherwise it, go, it might go too fast. With the Raspberry Pi, um, if actually with two lines of code in the sequence, you might get you might clock things too fast if you didn't have the delay. So it's, you should put that in there. And when you get faster Raspberry Pis in the future, if this period isn't big enough, long enough, then you can always change this value here to make it a longer value if it stops communicating properly. But this should this should work okay. I, I can't see that see that you would want to change that. Now I just define the days of the week so that when I convert a day of week integer into a string I just like look up in this this string of days of the week and I've just made Monday the first day of the week you can make Sunday the first day of your week if you want by just moving the last value to the front so when we create a class there's a few things we need to do well I set warnings on this GPI class to false although it still comes up with some of the warnings which is why I've got that shell script to, to get rid of those warnings uh, but set them to false anyway because maybe they'll fix that in future maybe we won't need to redirect error output um, then I set the, the mode so that of the GPIO so that I can specify the GPIO numbers rather than the pin numbers so you can either have it so you specify the pin number on the Raspberry Pi or the GPIO number and that is easier for me just to specify the GPIO number because then when we talk about GPIOs it, it just naturally fits they are called uh, an internal function which I've written in this class. So I've broken down the steps so that you call an initialize class uh, function, then you call a write or read function, and then you call a, an end communication function. Because uh, the module work can operate in a thing called burst mode, so you can do think, a series of commands all, all in one, one go. And then the, another thing is, so on the module it has a write protect mode, uh, so that you can set a flag and it ignores all the right commands that go into it and I'm not quite sure why they've got that but you need to make sure that that's switched off and also trickle charge so the module can also operate off of a rechargeable battery uh, rather than the coin cell and so you can make it so that when it's turned on it trickle charges that battery at, at certain rates and because uh, we're using coin cell we'll turn that off as well and then we end communication with the device so the first functions that we're going to go over at the top uh, and more internal functions which are used in a class. Uh, closed GPIO, well this is the one which comes at the end of the program. It just calls the GPIO class cleanup. Now you could call this one or you could just call the GPIO cleanup from somewhere else as well but it's nice and handy just to have it in here. Uh, then this is the thing which initializes the uh, GPIO interface for the module uh, and it sets all of the pins to output pins first. So most of the time you're going to be wanting to to write, uh, uh, certainly at first write, and then sometimes you'll want to read from the device. And then we make sure all of the pins are at zero by default, because we don't want any sort of clock pulses going to the device, which we don't, don't mean to go to the device. So we've set initial to zero up here anyway, but I just make sure that they're, they're set to zero there as well. And then we wait for a clock period of time, make sure the pins have time to settle uh, on, on the value and then we bring the CE pin up to 1. Now the CE pin is chip enable so this is enabling the device for communication. So that gets called before we do any communication then this one gets called after we finish doing communication 
and it does a very similar thing. It sets everything to output, so they're all in a consistent state. It sets the value of them to zero, uh, even though we've done it again uh, in there. Uh, then it sleeps for a clock period to make sure everything's settled down, and then it switches the device off by switching the chip enable to zero. Now what we want to do is to break things down into very simple terms. So every communication which occurs with the device is either a write byte or a read byte. So we've got broken those down into two functions as well. And very briefly, it goes through uh, for each bit within the byte. Uh, it will send a clock pulse. Well, sorry, it'll, well, well, first of all, we pause for a clock pulse. We set the clock zero to the clock pulse down to zero, which it should be initially anyway, but because we're in a loop, this is part of the, the procedure for sending, uh, for writing to the device. We use these fun this function mod and div. So to get a bit from the, the data, the byte which is sent into us, we divide it by two and any, any remainder from that division, we consider the bit that we're looking at. Then what we do is we update the byte to be the modulus, the, the most, the significant part of that division. Uh, so that next time we come to, to get the bit, it will get the next bit, and so on. Uh, we make sure that we wait for a clock period time, because we set the clock there to zero, we've got to make sure that we uh, give it a little bit of time to settle down. And then we set the output the, of the I.O. pin to, to what the bit value is. We wait again for the clock period time, and then we set the clock to up, so we clock that bit in into the device. And we go around and we just do that for each bit within the byte, and it's as simple as that. Then the reading is a very similar thing. The first thing that we have to do though is we need to set the I.O. to be uh, an input so that we're reading rather than writing to the device. The byte that we're reading, we'll set that to value zero so that there's no spurious values in that um, before we read. And again, it's exactly the same. We, we go through eight bits. We wait a clock period. We set the clock up, the clock pulse up. We wait another clock period and we set it down, and on that clock up down pulse, it will present us with a bit that we can read. So we wait a clock period, because after we set it down, we need to just make sure that it's got had time to put the data on the on the wire, and then we actually read what the bit is from the actual device. And it comes in bit the least significant bit first. So we when we put it into the the byte our byte data, we need to say two to the power of the bit count that we're on. So first of all, we zero, then it'd be one, then it'd be two. So two to the power of zero times bit, which just says if, if the bits are zero, it's going to be zero anyway. If the bits are one, then it'll be whatever two to the power count is. And we add that to the to the value. And go, go around eight times, and we set each bit, which we read. And then we return the byte. So then we come into the, into the actual uh, functions themselves, they're going to be very similar. So we always, what we always do before we do a, a function is we initialize the interface, as we discussed before. We write a byte, and this tells it what sh what address we're we're actually doing. Um, and so on this, we're going to the RAM address for for writing to the device. So the RAM address for writing and reading is different, but this is the one for writing. And we go through for each length of the message which you sent in, which is the data. We'll, we'll then write that byte out to the device and we'll clear off any, so if the data is less than 31 bytes, we'll go from, for the remaining bytes of that message, we'll just output a space character. And then we end communication. So reading the RAM is very similar. Initialize, set the address of the reading for the message, for the data. First of all, set the data to nothing. Then we go through the, all of the 31 bytes and we read a byte according the function, internal function, which we described earlier. Whatever comes back, we add it as a character to the data. Because I've set this up to, to read and write character data. You could set up to read and write binary data if you wanted to. And then we end communication and we return whatever data we got back. Then write, uh, write date and time. So passing the individual values for, for date and time. Initialize the device as we did in the previous functions set the address to be what we want to write date and time 
So the, 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 the way we call each of these functions is so similar that there's very little difference between them. Uh, this one's uh, slightly more different than the others because uh, what, when we uh, write the, the data, we have to take each of the values and we manipulate the, the, the integer value, which we're passing in, into a binary coded decimal value. So that's what this, this stuff is doing. It's saying that if we divide by 10, then the whole value, the remainder, sorry, the, the whole value, the modulus, uh, we pass in as the first binary code the decimal, and then the remainder of the division, we multiply that by 16 to bring it back up to a whole value, uh, which is the, the biggest value, and we put that at the top, and we do the same for, for every single value that we have. So for this hours, days, month, and the process is exactly the same, the way that the data is stored in the module. And then there's two more things that we have to do, and the reason we do this is because when you're in burst write mode, you have to write a full number of bytes, otherwise it'll take it as half written data and it ignores it. So we also have to set, make sure the write protect is set off again, and set the trickle charge to be turned off again, and then we end communication. Then the final function is to read the date and time, initialize the, the um, system, write the address for reading the uh, date and time, uh, and then we read the bytes and we convert now the binary coded decimal value back into an integer value and put it into our, 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 our variable here, which is our structure of, of variables. And, and it's exactly the same for all of these, all the way down. And then the, finally, what we do is we take the values which we've read back and turn, convert them into a string. So we return the string value as a return value after we've finished our communication uh, and all the others go back in all the other individual integer values go back in this, this uh, structure.